Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll continue our iPad calligraphy tutorial. In the first part of the series, I already shared how to create a custom brush that's ideal for your calligraphy practice. And today, I'm going to show you how to write basic stroke, which you could say are the foundation of calligraphy. I'll say learning basic strokes is one of the most important steps in practicing calligraphy. Think of it this way. When you're learning to play the guitar or piano effectively, your first step is to become familiar with and master the basic notes and chords. After learning all eight of these basic strokes, you'll not only be able to write calligraphy letters based on those strokes, but mastering them will significantly enhance your skills and take it to the next level. Also, it's important to mention that today's lessons on basic strokes are not limited to iPad calligraphy. You can also apply them to traditional paper, pen, and ink calligraphy for sure. Now, we'll explore eight fundamental strokes serving as the building blocks for writing most of the alphabet. I'll guide you through these strokes based on the calligraphy style called copperplate. So grab your iPad, Apple Pencil, and let's get started. So let's open the Procreate app. We covered each step of how to insert the guide sheet in the previous video, and we've custom made our calligraphy brush already. Now, let me show you one more trick to how to organize your brush library. Remember those duplicated custom brushes under the calligraphy category? The one we fine-tuned have the small Procreate logos on the side, right? Let's create our own brush category. Go to the top, click the plus sign, rename the folder as you like. I'll type Liz's brushes. Now, go back, find your custom brush, and simply drag it into your folder. Notice how the brush is now gone from the original folder, but has moved into the new one. This way, you don't have to keep searching for your brush. It's conveniently ready for you in the new folder. Now, there's one thing I've upgraded from the previous video. If you click the brush and open up Brush Studio under Shape, I've created an even better shape for the brush. Previously, we used a semicircle shape, which worked well, but now I've created a rectangle that has been skewed to the right. This allows us to achieve square tops and bottoms even more effectively. At the bottom of the settings, I've tightened the blue dots very closely, and for the green dot, which was previously set at 20 degrees, now with the new shape, 0 degrees gives a best result. The new brush file will also be available for download in the link below. Let's choose a color by clicking on the color wheel icon. Here's another Procreate tip. When you want the purest black, simply double click near the black area and Procreate will automatically select the purest black. The same goes for the pure white, double click. This also works for the purest color. Now, before we begin practicing the basic strokes, notice there are two buttons on the left side of the screen. The top dial adjusts the size of your brush, and the bottom dial adjusts the opacity. The first basic stroke we're going to go over together is called entrance and exit stroke. So starting from the baseline, we're going to draw a slightly curved hairline and stop at the waistline. For this hairline upstroke, we're putting as light pressure on the pen, we're simply gliding on the screen. I try to look at this negative space, uh, this triangle right here. Let me draw it a little larger so that you can see it more easily. So when you do this curve, I try to think of this wedge that is holding uh, a seed, like maybe a pumpkin seed. Yeah, some sort of seed that is leaning towards the wall. That's the type of curve that we want to make for the entrance stroke. So some of the common mistakes that I see in many beginners is curving the line too circular. We do not want to make a line that looks like we're hugging a ball. Also, we do not want to make a straight line. That's a no-no. So we want to make a nice, gentle upward curve. It's okay if your stroke looks a bit shaky. That's because your hands does not have the muscle memory yet, but as you practice more, it will definitely get better. 
So don't be discouraged, but keep on practicing. The entrance stroke and exit stroke is very evident in lowercase s. And let me show you what it looks like. So with the entrance stroke and the eyelet and the upside down C with another eyelet and the exit stroke. So as you can see, the entrance stroke is right here in the beginning and exit stroke at the end. Let's move on to the second stroke, which is overturn stroke. Overturn stroke also begins on the baseline and moving upwards towards the waistline and then coming back down and finishing off with the square bottom. Let's try one more time, going up and down, finish with square bottom. Let's try to write it in large version so that we can see hairline up, make a gentle turn, coming back down with the shade and finishing off with the square bottom. So whenever I try to write overturn, I try to imagine this oval that is sitting inside of the overturn counter space. So like the name implies, this stroke is jumping over this oval. So it will be very helpful if you could imagine this invisible oval when you're practicing writing overturn stroke. Begin with the hairline to the left of the oval and falling back down on the right side of the oval with the shade and square bottom. Important aspect that we need to keep in mind is always keeping the lines on the 55 degree angle slant line. So both sides needs to be on slant. Also, it's important to keep this transition area very delicate. So let me show you what I mean. Hairline up, coming back down. This area, as soon as you make the turn downward, this area right here. It's important to keep the line gradually to the thickest shade. You do not want the top to be thick right away. The thickest part of the stroke should begin at the two third of the bottom. I personally learned the best from looking at the bad examples, things that I need to look out. Let me go over some of the common mistakes that you need to look out for. So we do not want the stroke on the right to be curved like that. As I mentioned before, it's important to keep both sides of the strokes to be straight. So maybe you begin on the slant and moving down where you somehow lost track and now it's off slant. In copper play script especially, it's very important to check your slant line. And another common mistake that I also sometimes make is making the downstroke really heavy without any transitional area right here. We want to make that area nice and delicate. So going up, keeping the hairline and then make the thick with the square bottom. This looks way more graceful and light handed. I feel like when we enlarge the letter form, we can see that detail more clearly. So as you can see, I made an abrupt transition without any delicate hairline. We want to avoid this. So let's try to write it in a correct way. Going up, touch it, coming down gently and make the shade. This is what we want, a gentle, delicate transition. Underturn stroke is a flipped version of the overturn. So it starts from the waistline with the square top and making a turn at the baseline and finishing back up at the waistline. So remember to start with the square top Let's try it enlarged version. Square top, going down, transition, going back up with the hairline, finish it at where you started. So let's break it down one by one. There is this oval sitting inside of the underturn. Always visualize this green oval when you're writing the stroke. Overturn is going over, but now we're going under. We're going to make a stroke as if we're holding the oval inside. Let's draw this oval once more. Remember, it's an oval, not a circle. We're going to start on the left side of the oval and then we're going to cup the oval and gliding onto the right side. Visualizing that invisible oval really helps you to keep it on the slant. 
So 55 degree slant on the left looks good and on the right. So as I pointed out when we were learning about the overturn stroke, it's important to keep the transitional line very delicate also for the underturn stroke. We want this area to be very delicate. Keep the shade on the two third top but the bottom one third, it needs to be very delicate and hairline. Common mistakes to avoid includes doing something like this, which has a rounded top. We do not want rounded top. We want a square top. And when you're making a stroke that is pointy at the bottom turn, we should avoid making a very pointy edge like this. We should always make a graceful circular motion. Another example to avoid is, of course, not keeping it on slant, but finishing off with a different angle altogether. Or maybe begin with the wrong slant and finishing off on the correct slant. This one is very low angle for our slant line, and this one is almost like a straight 90 degree angle. These are no good. It's time to learn a basic stroke called double turn. Essentially, double turn stroke is a combination of the overturn and the underturn stroke. Let me demonstrate how to write it. So beginning at the baseline and making an overturn, but combining it with the underturn and voila. So here on the counter space on the left, and counter space on the right needs to be equal. Let's try to write it big, going up, gentle transition and thick, gentle transition again, and going back up with the hairline. We should always keep these ovals inside, visualizing as you write the stroke. So there are now two identical ovals inside the stroke. Let me show you one more time, going up, transition, thick, transition, going back up, and finish. Always check if it is on slant. So there are three slants that is happening within this stroke. And remember how we have one third and two third rule also applying here. So top and bottom both have the delicate transition. So try to make a graceful and delicate transition on the top and the bottom. Try to keep the thickest shade on the middle only. Here's a quick tip for Procreate. When drawing a line, if you hold and don't lift your Apple Pencil, it will automatically create a perfect straight line. If you hold it down with two fingers while doing so, the line will rotate in perfect angles only. It's a neat and simple trick. Let's quickly go over the common mistakes that we should avoid. You were doing great until the end lost its 55 slant line. Or you could do a little bit something like this where it looks more like a modern script. The slant line is way off. And for this guy, the middle is almost 90 degree angle. It's a no. Another one could look like a pointy top with the pointy bottom. Always the pointy edges are not good. We want to strive for graceful and circular motions. Let's try to do the correct version. Up, down, and up. There we go. Mastering how to write the oval stroke is very important in Copperplay script because many of the alphabets are based upon this exact shape. Let's take it from the top. Begin with hairline, turn thick to thin and coming back round up, finishing up with the seamless connection. There's lots of things happening in this basic stroke, so let's break it down. Starting from the 12 o'clock mark, going down with shade, transition and thin meeting at where I begin. You would want your thickest shade to be either in the middle or a little bit below. Let me show you what you should not do. Just the same, going round and thick, thin, turning back up and finish. Do you see how on this example, the thickest shade is on the top left corner? Mm -mm. 
you want to watch out when you're writing the oval to have the thick on the middle or a little bit low of the oval shape. That way, the letter form looks more stable. Imagine running through an arrow right in the middle of the oval stroke. That should be the slant line. We should always avoid creating an oval stroke that looks like this. This might be a subtle difference, but look how if you draw in the middle of this oval, the axis is no longer 55 degree angle. This one is a no good. You know what time it is? It's to go over the common mistakes. Mistake number one. Creating your oval, but not getting the connection nice and smooth. So we want to establish a seamless connection from beginning to the end. Number two common mistake that I see in many of my students is to make an oval like this with the pointy bottom and pointy ending. We should try to avoid this by making a smooth round oval like this one. After a little bit of practice, you'll be able to create a seamless connection like this in no time. So let me share a tip that will help you to make a seamless connection. So there are two ways to do so. You can start from the 12 o'clock mark, making your way down and coming back up and finishing at the 12 o'clock mark. Another way is to begin at the 2 o'clock mark on the right top corner, going up with the hairline and then the thick shade and coming back up, meeting at the 2 o'clock mark. So you need to try both ways and see which one is your favorite, 12 o'clock mark or 2 o'clock mark. After testing, I found out that I prefer the 2 o'clock. Moving on to number six, basic strokes, ascending loop. This stroke is going to go beyond the X height now. So starting from the waistline, moving up, touching the top, bring it down and finish off with the square bottom. Let's try one more time, starting a little bit higher than the waistline, going up, making a gentle turn, the shade and the square bottom. So always make sure the bottom is square, not circle. And notice how there is a tiny space above the waistline right here. There's a reason why I didn't start writing on the waistline, but a little bit higher. Let me show you why. So imagine writing like a letter H, so entrance stroke. And if you start at the waistline, look what happens. Going down with the ascending loop and square bottom and adding double loop as we have studied previously. Do you see how there is a hot spot right there? That's a no, no. Let me demonstrate a better example. So a hairline and then moving a little bit higher than the waistline, making the same ascending loop going down with thick square bottom and double loop and voila. Look how on this one, it looks nice and open. So you need to know that the oval stroke determines the spacing of most of the alphabets in the copper play script. This space right here, this will be determining the space of the ascending loop as well. So here is what I mean. There is the counter space that you have to keep in mind. And that space will determine when you make the ascending loop. So the counter space right in here should be exactly same as your oval stroke. So the space right here should be exactly same on the space right here. Let's quickly go over common mistakes to look up. So speaking of the space, we shouldn't make an ascending loop that has a very large counter space like this, or on contrary, creating an ascending loop that is so narrow in the space. The counter space here, it's too tiny. The counter space should be about like so. And square bottom. Checking on the slant, it looks good. One thing you really want to look out for is this line right here. You want this stroke to be straight. You don't want it to curve it out like so. So let me demonstrate the correct way. So straight going up, making a turn, gradual shade, 
square bottom. And here's the wrong way to do so. So flinging it out and making a curve, round, shade, and square bottom. So do you see how on here it's curved out and this one is straight? So we want to make a straight line rather than a curved one. Here's a quick Procreate tip. If you tap twice on the flat part of the Apple Pencil, the tool automatically toggles between the brush and an eraser. Notice how it jumps between the two? This will come in handy when you need to erase something really quickly. Another common mistake, you start with a nice straight line going up and doing an abrupt shade. So like we went over with other strokes, this top left corner is missing the delicate transition. As we went over straight line going up, delicate transition, gradually making a shade, finish off with the square bottom. Try to keep the delicate area alive above this line right here on the left corner, keeping the top one third delicate and the bottom to be the shade within this area right here. Descending loop is the exact flipped version of the ascending loop. I personally enjoy copper plate script because it has patterns and through those patterns, I find beauty. So this is how you write descending loop. So let's break it down one by one. So square top, coming down, gradual change, turning back and finishing off with the straight ending. So we want square top here. Keep in mind the oval shape inside of this counter space right here. Of course, it needs to be on the slant. Mm -hmm. Things to look out for, you want this portion of the stroke to be straight. We do not want to curve it in. So let me show you what not to do. You begin nicely with the square top, but you start to curve the line. Look how it looks unbalanced now. We want to avoid this. So as I mentioned before, in copper play script, it's very important to train your eyes to see the negative space. So let me show you what I mean. Here I'm writing the correct way to write descending loop. And here's what we shouldn't do. Curve it out and in. Do you see this tiny triangle right here? That's what we want to see. But on the incorrect one, this tiny triangle is bigger. We should try to stay clear of making such large negative space like that. And let's go over one more factor that we need to keep in mind. Remember to finish near the baseline, not right on the baseline. So here's an example of what not to do. You finish right at the baseline, right here. We want to avoid doing that. We want to see a space below the baseline. And last tip for the descending loop. We want to go up and finish with the straight line right there. We do not want to make a stroke that looks like this, which does not finish with the straight line, but curved. You see the difference here? I'm quite guilty of making that mistake myself. So it's important to keep practicing and remembering those important factors that we need to look out. Let me gently turn the page and show you how the descending loop is exact reflection of the ascending loop. Let me show you right here. If I write the ascending loop next to the descending loop that we did together, it's exactly the same. So remember all the rules that applies to ascending loop is the same for descending loop. The last basic stroke that we're going to go over is full pressure stroke. Let's quickly go over all the points to look out for. Begin with the square top, consistent downward stroke on slant, and finish with square bottom. Creating square tops and bottoms is a bit more meticulous when using a pointed nib and ink. Thanks to the custom brush, this process has become almost too easy. We want the top and bottom both to be squares. We want to avoid doing this. Very off slant, obviously. 
We do not want to see a stroke like this, where the top is circle and the bottom as well. That's a no. And this mistake can happen. So when you're pulling downward, you're losing control over the pressure. So you might get this uneven stroke. We need a continuous motion all the way down and then square bottom. So to practice the full pressure stroke, here is what you could do. Try to utilize the guide sheet as much as possible so that you can get used to the 55 degree angle slant. And by making different heights of the full pressure stroke, you'll get to improve your skill really soon. One of the most effective ways to improve your writing, like learning any skill, is to study from good examples. One method is to follow along with strokes that are already written. I've created and uploaded traceable practice sheets for iPad calligraphy practice in my store. I'll leave the link in the description below for those who are interested. In the next video, which is the last part of the series of iPad Calligraphy, we'll explore lowercase alphabet letters using the same technique we've just learned for writing basic strokes. Until then, I hope you become familiar with the basic strokes. I'll see you in the next one, and happy writing!